Uh, how let's dial the clock back first. How long did it take to let go of the end of last season? And uh, have you learned anything in that regard over the last three, four years of your career? Yeah. Um, you know, I think I've, I've definitely learned a lot um, from the end of every season, and uh, none of them have, frankly, ended the way we want it to. Um, I think this year, it still takes some time. Um, you know, I think you get over it, you get past it, you move on, uh, you start to, to work out and get back into shape and do the things that you need to do to prepare yourself for, for the next season, but there's still part of it that stinks. Uh, you know, we get back into meetings today, we start to watch cut-ups, we go over different things, and some of the cut-ups from that game show up. And, um, you know, they motivate you. And so I think, um, you know, part of us has moved past it, part of it still stings, and uh, that's, you know, what you have to use as your motivation when you're working and uh, preparing for next season. There's a draft coming up, obviously, two quarterbacks in particular are expected to go one, two. Is there anything that you would say to them in terms of what to prepare, maybe something that you weren't prepared for when you first went into career, or you didn't expect. Good luck. I mean, that's <laughs> that's that's about that's about the best best thing I could say to him. But you know what? Both of them seem uh, Robert Griffin and, and Andrew Luck both seem like they've got level heads and um, kind of understand what's going to be expected of them. Um, you know, I think my biggest thing would just be keep your head down and work. And, um, you know, you can't worry about what's being said about you or, you know, what people expect from you. Expect a lot from yourself and go in there and work as hard as you possibly can. And if you do that, you know, you can sleep at night. And uh, that, that helps your first year sleep. That, that definitely helps your first season. Bill Barcel said on uh, ESPN yesterday, it seems like your era of quarterbacks, the younger quarterbacks, are so much more ready to step in and play right away as opposed to, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Why do you think that is? I, you know, I think there's a couple of different reasons. I can't speak for anybody else besides myself uh, coming into the league. I think the system that I played in at Boston College um, is very similar to – you know, the terminology and the protections, the pass protections, all those things are so similar to what we, we've done here in Atlanta the past couple of years. I think that, you know, was part of the reason. Um, you know, I, and then I think I was fortunate to have good teammates around me. I know when I came in, we didn't have a lot of success uh, the year before, but when I got here, there were, there were good players, good players on this team. And, and I think that helped in my particular situation. Um, as far as why everybody seems to have had success coming in, you know, I think the amount of time that you spend uh, working at your craft in college is probably different than it was 15 and 20 years ago. I mean, guys are up there uh, for five years and, and you really don't get a chance to go home. You're there all summer. Uh, you're in the weight room. You're throwing seven on seven. Um, you're doing those kind of things the entire year. And uh, I think that leads to guys being better prepared when they come to the NFL for what it's like. And, and I think that's one of the reasons it helps. Hey, Matt, what will uh, be uh, some advantages to you know, having the structure in the program, uh, off-season program, and getting uh, you know, another uh, more time with Julio in the offense and so forth? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's obviously great to have structure when you're doing it. Um, you know, last season, last off season was a different deal with the lockout. But I think guys are, are happy that we're able to be here, uh, work with our coaches, uh, work with each other on a consistent basis. I think as far as uh, Julio, you know, I think your first off season, uh, you, you know, as a, as a rookie, that first off season, you learn so much through the course of your rookie year, what it takes to play week to week. Um, and then you kind of have a chance to catch your breath. And, and I think he's had that chance to catch his breath, come back refreshed, have a new outlook on things. And, and for me, selfishly, it's, you know, I've got an opportunity to work with him for the next nine or ten weeks, however long we're here, and uh, get to know him better and, and get a better feel for him. Uh, and I think, you know, that rapport that we'll build uh, will certainly benefit us during the season. Had a chance to talk with uh, Coach Coder up in Indianapolis at, at, at length there. 
What have uh, been your impressions? Uh, how are you excited about learning the new playbook? And uh, what is he bringing uh, as the new offensive coordinator for you guys? I've been, you know, I've enjoyed working with Dirk so far. I think, um, you know, from from you know just our meetings the last two days, um, I'm excited about it. I think he brings a little bit different perspective um, from Mike Malarkey the last couple of years, and uh, you know sometimes when things are explained a different way to guys, uh, it's it seeps in and and guys learn better that way. So. Hopefully Dirk will provide that for us. I think he will. Um, as far as changes to the scheme, you know, I, I appreciate some of the things that he's kept the same for us because there are a lot of guys who have been here for a long time and uh, there's a lot of familiarity with the terminology and those kind of things. So he's adjusted a little bit to, to us uh, and certainly we've adjusted, we're going to adjust to some of the things that he's brought in. But I'm, I'm certainly excited about it and uh, very excited to be working with him. Um, you know, I, I'd say maybe 15%, 20% is new. There's some different things, but, um, a lot of the stuff, you know, there, there's in the NFL, there's so much similarity between offenses. I mean, everybody has similar concepts and does similar stuff. It's how it's taught and how it's executed. That, that is really different. So, um, a lot of the stuff is similar, but I'd say maybe 20% has changed. Discernible difference in playbook itself going through? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely some differences, um, but it's still big and there's still a lot of pages. And <laughs> I've got to get deeper into it, uh, that's for sure. Uh, but, you know, I think the biggest thing I think is, is how concepts and how uh, things are taught and, and when certain plays are called and how we execute those things. And, um, you know, I think as a player, you have to learn the scheme and system as best you can, but, but your primary focus has to be on execution. And I think uh, from a player's perspective, our execution needs to be better. It hasn't been up to the standard that we need to be at. And, um, you know, that's what we're going to work on this offseason. I know it's early yet. Do you sense a more aggressive approach with this offense going downfield more? Because we've heard that with Dirk Cutter and his offenses in the past. We haven't been on field with the coaches yet. You know, we're uh, we're at the kind of the rudimentary stage of of install of this offense. So it's early for that, but um, you know, so it's it's too early for that. Hey, what will you do during the draft? Uh, you have a, you hmm? stick around and watch some of that, or yeah, we don't we don't pick the first night, so yeah, I won't watch Thursday. I won't watch Thursday, but. Um, you know, sometimes I usually catch a little bit of the beginning. It brings back uh, some great memories of, I guess, four years ago this April. And, um, you know, so it's, it's fun to watch those guys. It's an exciting time for them. Uh, but Friday I'll be, you know, dialed in. I'll be paying attention um, and seeing what we do. And then through the weekend as well. You know, they're, they're guys that are going to be teammates um, in a couple of days. And, you know, hopefully – uh, during that period, we'll bring in some guys that can contribute to what we want to do next year. There's some talk that perhaps one of those draft picks will be used to uh, in, in a trade for Asante Samuel. If, that's, if that were to happen, it would affirm the, 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 uh, the belief that the Falcons are in a win now mode. It's, you know, as, as, a, as a quarterback, is that something that you would be you know, like to get? I'm certainly in a win now mode. Um, you know, I think. That's that's the only way you can approach the NFL. I mean, it's it's um, every time you suit up and every time you play, it's for one reason, and that reason's to win. Um, as far as Asante Samuel is concerned, I think I can only speak for having played against him a number of times, and I know that he's been extremely difficult to play against and uh, done a great job against us when we played against him in the past. Do you, I don't think it's any overlap, but the Kingsley kid at Boston College, you know of him from maybe watching the game and so forth, uh, or was he a red shirt, red shirt? No, he wasn't there when I was there. Okay. But um, Luke is, I mean, I, I try and watch as many games as I can, and um, hopefully we'll be on some more nationally televised games uh, in the next couple of seasons. But um, 
I, and I think we will. I think they're doing a good job up there and heading in the right direction. Uh, but Luke's a great player and a uh, really, really nice kid. I had the opportunity to meet him last year. I went up for um, Boston College's spring game and uh, got to, to meet him in person. And um, he's bright, he's intelligent, and uh, he's tenacious on the field. You know, I love watching him play. Uh, he, he seemed to have made every tackle last year uh, on their defense. So. Um, I think he'll be a great player in the NFL. I really do. I uh, don't look forward to playing against him, um, but it's uh, an exciting time for him, and I'm happy for him. And I know the mantra is one game at a time, but do you look at the schedule the way that yeah. most people look at the schedule and try to figure it, anything out from it at all? No. I mean, you know, we, we know the teams that we're going to play. That's kind of slated. And... Um, the one thing I, I guess I saw from it this year is that we don't play a back-to-back -back home game or a back-to-back -back road game the entire season. But that's about all I took from it. I know that um, your, your focus as a player is so narrow and uh, has to be week to week that you can't worry about the big picture. And um, you know, right now, it's all about trying to win that first game against Kansas City. And, and that's where our mindset has to be at, working towards that uh, and then going from there. Hey, Matt. Uh uh, Thomas talked last week about protecting you and so forth, and uh, you know you got some guys here, and, and maybe are picking up one Thursday. How do you feel about your protection going forward, and uh, you know sack numbers and hit numbers that you all had last year? Yeah, I think you know I think in in the sack numbers, I think we were in the top ten uh, for sacks allowed. So you know I thought our guys did a, a good job. They played hard, played physical. Um, we need to improve as a whole. You know, I, I need to help them out a little better. I need to do some things uh, better within the pocket with my footwork uh, to put them in better positions. And um, certainly, you know, our guys will try and improve up front too. Um, but, you know, I love the guys we have in front of me. And, uh, you know, they're, they're my guys. I, I'll, I'll take them any day of the week. I, the 84 hits wasn't – that was kind of high uh, in the league uh, rankings. So you might have been helping them out by getting it out. Yeah, that's but that's part of the position. That's part of playing the position. If you don't think you're going to get a hit playing the quarterback position in the NFL, uh, you're mistaken. And so that's not something I worry too much about. Just, um, you know, my focus has always been trying to get the ball out, making good decisions, and when you do get hit, getting up. How long does it take the quarterback to feel after a season? After 84 hits? What's well, really more than that? But. Uh, it, I mean, it depends on the year, and it depends on – how well some of those hits landed. <laughs> uh, you know, for me this offseason, I was, you know, relatively healthy coming out of it. And so, um, you know, two or three weeks after, before the Super Bowls even played, I was ready to get back after it and start working again. So, you know, I felt good this year coming out of it, but it really just depends on the season.